Okay, we're recording. Okay, so Leanne uh, and everyone, today and tomorrow is for everyone, and th uh, Wednesday, Thursday is for the juniors and seniors, and so juniors and seniors are required to attend, and it becomes a part of their grade, like their quiz grade and all that stuff. Ninth and 10th graders don't have to attend. If they want to attend, they can, but it's not at all necessary for them, because we're gonna cover calculus, some elementary things in calculus. Okay. Um, someone said, I can't change, I don't think you can change your name. I set it in like my Zoom settings. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay, don't worry about, don't worry about uh, the, the name business. Okay, so. What about English? I don't know anything about English. I, I could not tell you. So, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I have no clue. Um, okay, so you all should be able to see my screen at this point. Yeah, so if you have a question about English, ask, um, how do you do this? There we go. If you have a question about English, um, ask Pratik. Sorry for the lack of a better answer. Uh, I'm still a bit not woken up, so. Um, okay, so this is what you should have seen when you came in. <laughs> I'm falling apart here towards the end. Okay, uh, so, so people enjoyed Patricia's lecture on Thursday, and uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, it seems so you all covered probability, which is a really great topic. Um, it's a vast topic, and she did a really good job of like working through a bunch of problems. And sort of today, we're going to continue uh, with the spirit of working through problems. So make sure you have a pen and uh, or pencil and a piece of paper with you. Uh, but today, instead of just talking about probability, we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about all of the stuff we've learned. In, and the way we're going to do this is, yes, there is a quiz today. The way we're going to do this is uh, you're going to, I'll present a problem, give you about 30 seconds to a minute based on how hard the problem is. And these are all problems from the SAT. And then I'll do it for you. Okay. Oops. Okay. Does that, okay. Uh, Oh, and just like uh, organizational thing is to note that the there is no more homework in this class. So if you have received, I don't think anyone has received their homework eight grades, but you will be receiving that soon. And if you're happy with your grade and you're happy with all the other grades you've made in the course, then you don't have any more homework. But if you are not happy with your homework eight grade, and if you're not happy with maybe a previous grade in the course, this is the last week to do your correction. So you can submit a second copy by Thursday at 9 p.m. Okay, and then we're going to spend a few days getting everyone's grades together, making sure the grade book is accurate, and then computing your final grade. And based on your final grade, if you make above a, a B minus, then you uh, are eligible for the IntelliChoice scholarship, and it seems that many of you will be. Uh, and uh, then there's this additional award for students who are performing very well or uh, students who are participating a lot. And so, so make sure, yeah, so I, I can, I know who is participating. And at this point of the course, you, your fate is almost sealed, <laughs> but, but do continue to participate. I do appreciate it a lot. Okay, so I'd like to begin this review by asking you what topics uh, covered in this course were things that you found to be particularly inspiring or wondrous? And this is a question I'm very much asking you. I want to hear what you found to be inspiring or wonderful. Adi said quadratics. Graphing. More graphing. Keep it coming. You can also just, okay, so, okay. I don't know who, Someone said probability spiral graphing, all of math. Wow, okay, great, great. And so I very much appreciate these answers. 
and they reveal something very deep about math, and that is that uh, math is uh, math, math is very much um, almost a form of art. You know, there's a, a sort of aesthetic beauty to it, and when we're driven by uh, sort of artistic fascination by math, then the sky's the limit. So these are, I just want to get you all thinking and sort of uh, reflective on the entire course. And that's why I ask you this question. Uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, the juniors and seniors will find that maybe their answer will change. Their answer today will change because I'm hoping that they're going to get even more out of the course on those days. Okay, great. So thanks for sharing those things. And with this, I, I urge you all, this is sort of big picture motivation, not math, but I urge you all to focus more on your interest and attitude than on course content. And this is just my two cents on life and school. If your attitude is developed and if you have the right motivation, then um, no one can stop you. And the SAT also, I had a really good conversation with Anya, one of our tutors, uh, about how the SAT is not being used by colleges. Any, I mean, uh, many call like the entire California state school system has done away with their SAT requirements. And UT Dallas, which is my institution, UTD is now considering, not, not the entire school, but certain scholarships, they're now going to not be considering the SAT score, partly because of the pandemic, but partly because the SAT is not the best indicator of who you are as a person. So don't let your score determine who you are. In fact, some of the smartest people I know do not do well on the SAT. And knowledge will only get you so far. Attitude will carry you to the heavens, right? You can know things, you can read books, you can, uh, you can possess knowledge, but if you don't have the right attitude, if you don't use the knowledge well, or if you don't spread the knowledge, with a good sort of feeling, uh, it's, it's not useful. So I, again, so attitude is the most important thing, okay? Okay, so let's do these sample questions. And uh, I want to first tell you what will be given. So, okay, so I, want, I need your help, people. If I do this, does my screen become smaller? Can you see like my desktop? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my volume was turned down a lot. So yeah. I, okay, okay. Sorry if people have been talking this entire time. And I, okay, great. So you can all see this. So first I want to tell you what is given on the test. And there it is. I'm going to keep this here so I don't have to. Okay, so this is what is given. So you all can see this, right? Yeah. Like what I just pulled up. Great. So this is what is given on the first page of the math test, of all the math sections. Uh, and this is from a number of years ago, but I think it's basically the same now. So these are all things that I sort of expected you to know on like that geometry worksheet. Remember when some people asked me, what is the volume of a cube? And I had to tell them it's one third pi r squared h. And you don't have to know that, you don't have to memorize that. Some people also on the geometry worksheet, by the way, the, I, I got the grades back for the geometry worksheet and Viviana got the highest grade in the class, just FYI, no one else, and people did, some people did well, and some, I mean, it was a hard worksheet, so feel free to correct it. Anyway, congratulations to Viviana. Uh, okay, people mistook the circum or the area, surface area of the sphere for the volume. So these are mistakes that you won't have to worry about on the SAT because you can just flip to the front cover and you're given all of these things. And I just want to also point out these special right triangles, you know, between these two things, you, you, have all of the trigonometric uh, like values. You have sine of 30, cosine 30, tangent 30, sine 60, cosine 60, all, all that stuff. Does it make sense? Okay, and Viviana says, thanks. It's your mom's name. It's funny, Viviana, because Patricia mentioned that it was your mom's name like the first time in the office hours. So that's, that's very sweet. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, so, okay, the special right triangles, uh, these, are, these are useful because remember when I told you to memorize all the trig identities, all the trig uh, values, like for sine, cosine, tangent, uh, you actually have them all here. Okay, right, you can say, say I wanted sine of 45, then I'd take, here's my 45 degree angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so you know, S over S root two, which is one over the square root of two, which is you know, root two over two, which is what you know to be sine of 45. 
Anyway, uh, can anyone tell me why they have uh, given you this last statement? The sum of the measures in degrees of angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Can anyone tell me why? It's more significant than you think. And they're actually really smart to do this. But no, Adi, it's not because it always is. In fact, I gave you an example. I gave you an example of when it isn't always the case. In fact, here, can you see my Look, I, gave, I showed you this example. Look, 50 degrees, 90 degrees, 90. Is the sum 180 degrees? No, it's 230 degrees. 90 plus 90 is 180 plus 50 is 230. So why would they tell you that the sum of the measures of the degrees, you know, of, a, of the angles in the triangle is 180 degrees? It's more mathematically significant than you think. Is this flat space? No. It's round. And so what are they telling you? We talked about this in the geometry week. I was hoping that people would catch this. But when you, when you define that the sum of the measures of degrees in the angle, uh, the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, you're making a statement about flat space. You're saying that we're working in Euclidean space. Anyway, that's why they say that. They don't want you to think that you're working in curves. It's more mathematically significant than you think. Anyway, the SAT people are smart. They, even though sometimes it seems not the case. Um, okay, so let's just get started. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, I'm counting. Go. Okay, time's up. So what's the answer? D, Adi says D. Okay, I actually don't know because I was drinking my tea while you, <laughs> while you answered this. So let's do it. Let's do it together. What, okay, so Adi says D and someone said A, Matthew said A, John Dub said A. Okay, so what, uh, which of the following is equal to zero for some value of X? Where, how, how should we approach? What, what are people's thoughts? Just plug in zero for X. So th th what they're asking is which of the following is equal to zero for some value of X. So it's not saying what does the expression equal when X is zero. Those are two different things. Well, it could be, no, it actually, so, okay, so I, look, I haven't done this question either, but, but the, um, what they're really asking is which, so it, it won't be possible for some of these things, apparently for three of these things to be zero, right? For example, you know, it's because the absolute value is always greater than one, right? You know that D, sorry, answer choice B cannot be zero, right? Because X plus one, I don't know how well my cursor shows up, but but this thing is always greater than zero, right? Or equal to zero. And then when you add one to it, that thing definitely cannot, this equality goes away, right? So, so it can't be B. Oops, I can't draw on this, sorry. Okay, so B, B is not right. Uh, C is the same thing because one minus X, it doesn't matter if you have one minus X or one. This is all still positive, so, so this, it can't be uh, C. And same with D, right? But for, for A, it does, for A, it does work because this minus sign. And specifically, x can actually be, x can be many things. X can be zero, you know, to satisfy this. So, so if I wanted x minus one minus one to be zero, there are many solutions. And, and you could solve this thing very easily. But by inspection, you can see that x is zero is a solution. x is um, two. Two won't, two won't work because, uh, no, two, two will work. Two will work. You're right. Uh, yeah, because that's one minus one, which is zero. Thanks. And th that's what we expect if we solve this algebraically. So you don't have to solve this algebraically. 
uh, to get the answer. But this gives you the same statement, you know. Uh, so this means that x minus 1 is either 1 or x minus 1 is negative 1, right, from your definition of absolute value. And this means that x is either 0 or x is 2. OK, good. So you don't, you don't need to solve the equality. You just need to see which one is possible. Does that make sense? So you're not plugging in. Yeah, so, so Adi, I think a lot of people got the, the right answer for the wrong way, for the wrong reason. They got A because they plugged in 0. For, they're not asking you, what is the value of the expression when x is 0? They're saying, which of the following expressions can equal 0 for some value of x? And it just is such a coincidence that x is 0 is a solution. OK, good. I hope that makes sense. OK, uh, 30 seconds. Go. Okay, stop. Who has an answer? A. People are saying A. Okay, so what, what really is this question? Okay, Robin says A. That's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, what, first of all, what type of equation is this? Is it linear, quadratic, cubic? It's linear. So Adi said linear algebra. Linear algebra refers to an entire class of algebra. So yeah, you just call this a linear function. Okay, good. And so they're asking you to find this parameter b. And if they're saying that if f of x is 6, then what is the So really what you have to do is first you have to find b, given this piece of information that f of, f of 6 is 7. And then you have to plot, you, then you come up with a full definition of f of x, right, with a value for b. And then you have to find uh, f of negative 2. And so this is very simple. And this is probably what all of you did. Uh, you put in 6 for f of, uh, for, for x, right? So I'm putting in 6 plus b, and you solve this thing for b, right? So, so I've employed this statement, f of 6 is 7. That's what I've done here. So this is a b, not a 6. b. OK, and 3 halves of 6 is 9, right? And then solving this for b, sorry, it's equals b is negative 2, right? So your full definition of f of x is 3 halves x minus 2. And now you plug in negative 2 for x. And you have you know, 3 halves negative 2 minus 2. And so uh, this is what? Negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5. So a is the correct answer. Great. Good job. I'm not going to really like pause and ask, does this make sense? Because I think most people are getting it. If, we, if people give me an answer that isn't the same as the one then, then we'll stop and go through it slower. OK, uh, I'm going to give you 30 seconds again. Go. OK, I'm not sure if that was 30 seconds, but stop. And does anyone have a solution? OK, people are saying A. So this is just our good old friend, a system of linear equations. So Adi, this is truly linear algebra. OK. So. There are many ways to solve a system, as we discussed in the second, I think, week of the course, or for maybe first week of the course. Yes, first week of the course. And one of those ways, uh, anyway, you can, you can use any way you want. I think the easiest way in this case is substitution. So what I could do is this first equation, I could, I could rewrite this in terms of x. You know, uh, yeah, I could solve this for x in terms of y. So x is 6y. And then I'll plug in 6y for x here, right? So 4y plus 
one is six y and now solving for y and this is good because they're asking for the value of y so four y plus four is six y and now solving for y gives you four is two y or what y is two and so a is the correct answer good job people you're doing well okay let's do the next one okay uh let me give you 15 seconds for this one. Okay, time's up. That was 15 seconds. This really shouldn't take as long because this question, okay, so people are saying B, really this question is asking whether you understand the notation of functions. And okay, it looks like many people are saying B. Thanks for that. So when, when they change the argument, right, when they ask you what F of negative three X is, you literally just plug in instead of X, you know, so here we have the original function for X. Instead, of, every time you see X, you just plug in negative three X. So literally this becomes instead of, so F of X is this, and I'm gonna replace this X with negative three X, right? It's just a matter of keeping everything straight in your head. Okay, this is becoming that. It's just a substitution, and then you find out what this is, and this is indeed what people are saying, B, uh, 6x plus 5. Good job, people. So far, things are going smoothly. And the amount of time I'm giving you is about the amount of time uh, that you should expect on the SAT. Okay, I'm going to give you 15 seconds for this. Go. Okay, stop. C, people are saying C. Okay, let's see. So, huh, let's see. Uh, okay, so really, literally just, uh, this, is the easy, this is even easier than factoring, right? Because we are going the other way. And so how do you do this? You FOIL. And so what I would do is, uh, just so it's all one step, I would, I would uh, you can, it doesn't really matter, but I, I can multiply three by three. So, so one of these things can absorb this three. So maybe six X plus three, right? Can be the first term. You, I could have also writ, written, you know, distribute, uh, multiply by three. Anyway, it, you don't really have to do that. You can keep the three out. Okay. So this is what you have to FOIL and this is 24 X squared. So first outer plus 12 X inner plus three last. And this is 24 X squared plus 18 X plus three, and that is indeed C. Good job, everyone. Okay, how about this one? I'll give you, I'll give you 30 seconds for this. Go. And um, time's up. What are people's answers? B. B, B. Okay. So th this is one of those weird SAT questions where, you know, you're not really solving an equation, right? Because they have given you apparent forms of this expression just written different ways. And so really what you have to do is just manipulate this to match one of these things. And the easiest way to do that is to note that this first fraction, a minus b, you know, a minus b over b, well, that's just a minus a divided by b minus b divided by b, and b divided by b is one. So first of all, I want to make sure that everyone knows that you can do this, right? This is by the commutative property, right? You can you can do this. Okay. 
So I hope this is not news to people, but note that you can't do, if I had, if I had, sorry, if I had like C divided by D plus E, that is not equal to C over D plus C over E. So that is not, okay, so, so be careful. It doesn't, doesn't work that way because that violates your order of operations. Anyway, this, this is totally in accordance to the order of operations and the commutative property of multiplication. So, so that's why you can do this. And now if, if this entire thing is equal to three sevenths, this is three sevenths, this is three sevenths. Now it's easy to find what A plus B is. And you know, two of these answers are giving you A, sorry, A over B. And so it's easy to find what A over B is. You can just add one to both sides. So three sevenths plus one, uh, well, one is just seven sevenths, right? And so this is 10 sevenths. So it looks like B is the correct answer. Any questions about this? I got fewer responses from everyone. Usually there have been at least five people who were responding. Okay, and then Wong just said B. Okay, good, good. People seem to be doing well. Okay, uh, I'm giving you mm, 10 sec uh, 15 seconds for this. Okay, stop. So what are your answers? A, A, A. Okay, so most people are saying A. So what is the condition for a line to be parallel to another line? We spent quite a long time on this. Same slope, and where is the slope? So, so what is the slope of the original line? It's negative three. And so our answer has to have the slope of negative three. Right? So let's, let's see if A, so many people are saying A, so let's see if A has the slope of negative three. So I'm gonna put A in our good friend slope intercept form, Y is MX plus B. Right now this is not in slope intercept form. So to do that, I'm gonna move the six on this side and I'm gonna divide by two, right? So I have negative three and here is our indeed, you don't even have to continue really. Perfect, right? But how about, uh, you might be confused, you might be attracted to answer choice B, but be careful for the sign, right? If I, if I looked at B, if I rewrote this, it would be Y is three X minus seven. And many students would, would look at B and say, oh, I see a three and I see a three here. So that must be the right answer, but don't do that. You know, because uh, the sign, these are definitely not the same. These lines are definitely not parallel because their slope is not the same. It differs by a sign, which is significant. Can anyone tell me what the slope uh, of a perpendicular line is? If the slope of your original line is M, what is the slope of a line perpendicular to that? Can someone tell me? Negative one over M. Good, thank you. I think that was a Ruhi. Good job. Uh, yes, so this, this gives you a line that is perpendicular. That, that's the sign for perpendicular, perpendicular to the original line. Good job. Just to want to refresh. So I hope all this is coming back. I hope you can see that the homework questions I've been giving you are quite a lot harder than this, I think. So you all are well prepared. Okay, how about mm, 10 seconds? Uh, no, sorry, that's not fair. Uh, 20 seconds, go. That was 20 seconds. I'm not sure if that was enough time, but let's, let's do it. So if they're saying if A is two, what is the solution set of this equation? When they say, what is the solution set? They're just saying, what, you know, what are the solutions to the equation? And this is the set notation when they write, you know, two numbers in, a, in brackets, right? That this means this is a set of numbers. It's just like a list or a tuple for the computer science people, it's just a list. Um, so really you just plug in A, for, uh, two, two for A, so I'm gonna do that. So X minus two 
is x minus four. And now, does this look like something in the form by itself? Does this in its current form look like something you've solved before? I would, I would say no, right? I, we haven't really solved equations with square roots in them, but you have, what you have done is you've solved equations with squares in them. And so what I would do is I'd square both sides of this equation, which is sometimes a mathematically risky thing to do because you lose a sign, but um, Anyway, let, let's, let's, let's forget that for now. And, and if you square this, then the square root here goes away. So uh, x minus two is x minus four whole squared. And then you could, you could solve this. So this, this, this is a perfect square. So uh, this is x squared minus eight x plus 16. And now you can uh, put zero on this side. So x squared minus nine uh, x um, and then minus two, so then a, pl a plus 18, right? And now you can easily factor this uh, into, uh, you know, using our good old method that I taught you into that. And now using the zero product property, I hope this is still visible on my screen. I know I'm really at the bottom here. And using the zero product property, you have x is six and x is three. And so answer choice A is correct. But did you need to even do this? Not really, because when they give you the solutions, you can just plug them in and see if they work. So you could have plugged in two, right? Okay, so first of all, this is the rig what I did is the rigorous way of doing the problem. But what I'm about to tell you is that you don't need to do that per se, okay? And what you could have done is you just take your, take your original function, x minus two is x minus four, square root of x minus two is uh, x minus four, and just plug in to see if answer choice B works. So does B work? Uh, well, does, you know, two minus square root of two, so I'm plugging in, does this even make sense? No, the square root can't be negative, so B doesn't work, right? Because this, this, this is saying the square root of zero is negative two, which is obviously not true. Does C work? Well, C works and D also works if you tried them. Um, and if you, if you found that C and D both work, then you would select A. So there are multiple ways, there are multiple sort of strategies to go about these problems, uh, but I showed you the rigorous way first. Any questions about this one? Because no one answered the, no one answered my question. You don't think three works. Oh, yeah, you're, mm. three, you're actually right. Three doesn't work, okay, so that's a good point. It, okay, so the, okay, people. So I would have gotten this question wrong. <laughs> so the answer choice is actually D. And remember when I said that this, taking the square root, remember when I said that this step is, is not good? It's because when you square things, you lose a sign. So I really should have, so this, this step is algebraically not sound. So when you, if you do make a step, then you always have to test your solutions. And I clearly do not test my solution. So if you put in three, you'll get that the square root of three minus two is negative one. And the square root obviously can't be negative. So that, that's why three doesn't work. So sorry, people. The answer choice is D. Good catch, Rhea. Very good catch. Thank you. It works the square root of one can, no, the square root of one, the square root can never be negative. The square root of one is not negative one. Remember that the square root is a function. This, you know, this thing is a, like the square root of X. If I were to plot this, it, it's just this function. It, it doesn't include this, right? Do you remember this? Okay, you were thinking, this. okay, yeah. So remember, okay, we don't have time to really talk about it, but thanks, Rhea. So whenever you square a function to solve a, an equation, always check your, your solutions because one of them might be what, what is called an extraneous solution. And that's because when you square something, uh, your signs, remember, uh, remember that th this is a, one of the definitions of absolute value. 
So when you square something, and this is equivalent to this, right? When you square something, you lose the negative sign. Okay. So you have to check your solution. Uh, anyway, that, that was a good question for me to, to put me in. Okay, people. Um, how about this one? I'm going to give you, uh, let's say, 25 seconds. Go. <laughs> Okay, stop. What's the answer? I don't know how much. Adi, I'm not sure how long that was. Okay, so Adi says D. Maria says A. Uh, sorry, that's, that's actually Viviana. <laughs> okay. I like this. I like this. So we have some uh, disagreement. That's always good. Like, we can try to argue. So one way, if, if you're given the answers, obviously one way is to plug in these answers into your equation and then see if you get a correct statement. That's definitely one approach. But doing that is really a pain here because these are such bad numbers in a sense. You know, adding five to 55 ninths is, is hard. Okay, Matthew says D. Okay, so let's, let's, let's see. Okay, and then Viviana said, wait, no, D. So it looks like D might be the answer. But looking at this, can you immediately eliminate one of these answers? Audi said B. Okay, you can eliminate B. Good. And why can you eliminate B? Because you see that T minus five is in the denominator. And when B, sorry, when T is equal to five, you get an undefined, you know, you, you can't divide by zero, right? That, that's an improper thing to do in math because dividing by zero is uh, giving you an infinite sort of result. And so, uh, if you had five in the numerator, then you'd have 10 divided by zero. So, so obviously 10 divided by zero is not equal to 10. So that's an easy case to eliminate. So you know that C is not the answer. And, you, and people are saying you can also eliminate C. Uh, I'm not, I haven't thought about this, but uh, let me think of why you could do that. Maybe some people just plug that in. So Sure, you can plug it in and see if it gives you a correct statement. I'm guessing it doesn't. But you, so that's one approach. But you could also, you know, if you did that approach, you'd be down to A and D, and then it's really a pain. So what I would do is I just solve this thing, right? So T, T plus 5 divided by T minus 5 is 10. And so literally, you just solve this equation. You multiply both sides by T. Sorry, by, by, by T minus 5. So literally, this thing, I'm going to multiply by on both sides of the numerator. And t, so, so this thing and this thing cancel. So you have t plus 5, like that, right? And now this is just a linear equation that you can solve. So 10t minus 50. I'm going to subtract by t on both sides and add by 50. So I have 55 is 11t. Uh oh, see, I'm getting t. Sorry, it's not 11t, it's 9t. I made a arithmetic mistake. Okay, and so 55 ninths is your answer. Yeah, does that make sense? Did everyone follow my steps? So I just algebraically solved this. Okay, I hope that made sense to people. So D is the correct answer. Seems like most people got that. Good. Okay, uh, I'm giving you... Mm, 15 seconds, go. You didn't have to really do any math here.
Okay, that was, I think, 20 seconds or so. So how are people, can someone turn on their microphone and explain to me how they're thinking about it? Because many people are saying C. Anyone who's brave? You can just, uh, you can just substitute X for 2i plus 5. Okay, so you're saying put in this first equation into here? Well, yeah, that's one way to do it. Is that that can give you the amount of order pairs. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm not sure if I'm following, but I'll, I'll do that. So I'm going to write uh, x. I'm going to put in x. That This thing is going to go into x, right? It's 2y plus 5. Is this what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And then you're saying expand this. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't even put an X here. This is, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting carried away. Um, okay, now Adi, what do I do next? Uh, so now you can just get, now you know the amount of order pairs. Now. It's, uh, how do I explain it? It's like, it, it's like, I can't explain it. it. It's like right there, you can just see it. I don't see it. Um, can anyone help Adi? Is this how other people, so many people got this answer of two. Can anyone help or give me another approach? Matthew says, or we could see that it is a, uh, that the second equation is a quadratic and the first one is a line. Okay. Well, I can look people. The first equation. Okay, so now Matthew says, mm, and a line intersects a quadratic twice. Okay, look, look, quadratic line, no intersections. Uh, how about quadratic line, one intersection, quadratic line, two intersections. Can you see how the geometry of the problem, the specifics of the problem will change the results? So this is not, just looking at this and saying, oh, it's a quadratic equation. You know that quadratic equations generally have zero, one, or two solutions, right? So, so first of all, you can eliminate D because quadratic equations don't have an infinite number of solutions. But you can't just say all quadratic equations. This is, you're right, Adi, this is a quadratic equation, but um, you haven't, you know, you haven't uh, shown that this really has two solutions. So one way to do that, one way to show that something has two solutions is to find the discriminant. So you could, you could simplify this thing, right? And you could, you could uh, just, just uh, you know, expand this and I'll do that for you. So 4y plus 10 minus, minus three. Tell me if I'm making any algebra mistakes, so, right? This is the same thing. So y, and then you can expand this. This is kind of a pain, plus seven, 2y plus 13. Okay, so this can be expanded and then you'll get a quadratic equation and then you can find the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. And if this thing is positive, then the answer is c, right? You have two solutions. If this thing is zero, then you have one solution and it's b. And if this thing is negative, then your answer is a. So that's one approach. Um, another approach is you can graph these things. That actually might be easier. Okay, so, so, I'm, so there are multiple ways of doing this. I think I'll do it this way because this is like, I've already kind of set it up, right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to simplify this. Sorry, this might've taken more than 15 seconds for people, I should have given longer. Um, okay, so this is, you know, eight Y squared, right? What's 13 times four? Can someone help me? It's 52, I think, yeah. Um, it's supposed to be 14, not 13. Oh, is it 14? Oh, you're right. Good catch. Good catch. That could have really messed me up. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Cause five, nine plus five is 14. Good. Okay. Uh, so, okay, good. So first outer, so what's 14 times four? Can someone help me? 56. Good. And uh, plus for the inner term, 14y. And then what's 14 times 7? 
Someone help me. Isn't it like 98, 98 or something? Yeah, 98. And so now I'm gonna uh, combine my like terms and I have a Y here. Don't forget about that Y. So 15 Y plus, uh, sorry, 56 Y plus 14 Y. That's 70 Y, right? Yes. And so this becomes, do people agree? And now you can compute b squared minus 4ac. So you can see that this is kind of a pain uh, because these are big numbers. And I'm not sure if this is like a calculator question. Um, but anyway, if this number is greater than zero, then your answer is two solutions. If this number is equal to zero, then your answer is one solution. So, so this is one way to do it. And if you have a calculator, you can, you can let me know what that is. Um, I have a feeling that that is bigger than zero. Yeah, 69 squared is much bigger than 98 times 32. So your answer should be two. But you can see that, you're, yeah, so the specifics of this question come down to what the discriminant of this equation is. The other ways to graph, right? The other ways to graph this equation Anyway, let's let's just do one more question so we're not really dwelling on this. But anyway, the answer is C. Okay. Let's do okay. Let's not do a word problem. Let's do something we can do fast. Okay, it's seven. Nishan said it's seventy. Okay, so yeah, your answer choice would be. I don't know how you got. Yeah, fifty-six plus fourteen is seventy, but then you have this Y on this side. Right, so you have to subtract and that's what gives you 69. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Um, let's, let's do this one last question and then I'm gonna send you your quiz. Okay, uh, I'll give you 20 seconds, go. Okay, people. And Nishan, you said you don't see that. What were you referring to? Are you referring to this next question or you don't see something in the previous question? The last Y. The last Y? Uh, okay, people. So, sorry, I'm going back. Continue on this if you... Nishan, look. We had, we had two equations, right? I'm not going to go back to the question, but those two equations give us, gave us this equation. And it was in terms of y, and you know that the quadra, you know, to to use the quadratic formula, the discriminant. If you want to think about the discriminant, one side of that equation has to be zero. So that's why I had to subtract by y on both sides to give me zero on the side of the equation. And seventy minus one, or seventy y minus y is sixty nine y. Okay, Lily messaged me. She said that b. Okay, Nishan, I hope that made sense. Stick around after the lecture if you still have questions. people. Okay, Lily says B. Okay, Nishan gets it. Good. Okay, so what, so what, so now this is, they're making you solve really a system of, remember how we were solving systems of linear equations? Now they're making you solve a system of nonlinear equations. These are quadratic equations. And there is no general solution to a system well, there is a general solution to a system of quadratic equations, but it's not one that we've explored. And it's not one that's captured in the field of linear algebra. So here we sort of have to eyeball it. Let's see what we can do. And when, what, ha, what is true about these intersection points? How, how what, you know, what? Okay, so I'm getting all sorts of answers. Okay, so let's, let's just do this. So if you want to find the intersection of two graphs, generally what you do is you set them equal to each other. So if I have f of x and g of x, I'm going to set f of x equal to g of x and then find the values of x, right? Find the values of x that satisfy this equation. And so f of x 
is 8x squared minus 2. G of x is minus 8x squared plus 2. Right? And now this is a quadratic equation that you can solve for x. Right? And so uh, you would have 16x squared equals 4. So x squared is 1 sixth, uh, sorry, is 1 fourth, right? 4 divided by 16 is 1 fourth. So x is plus and minus square root, sorry, square root of 1 over 4, which is plus and minus 1 half. So k, right, they're, they're saying that the answer, yes, they're saying that k, uh, so basically k is 1 half, right, because your solutions are at x is 1 half and minus 1 half. So the answer is B. Any questions? B. Okay, good. Um, so, okay, so sorry if today was kind of boring. This is, you know, we could have done this for like the entire course, just like, okay, let's do a bunch of SAT questions. This could have been every day of the course, but I, I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted it to be more like enriching and so I hope that you can see that everything you've learned in this course will help you greatly on the SAT. And this is the last day we're really spending on material that is covered on the SAT. Tomorrow, we're going to do graphing. And that is not going to be the graphing that this is not, that is not this type of graphing in the XY plane. We're going to be talking about extended topics in graphing. And I think you all will really enjoy it, but it is not on the SAT. So in terms of the SAT content, we're done. Okay. But do attend tomorrow. There will be a quiz. You will be sort of graded. Uh, and let me send you your quiz now for today. But does, okay, do people have questions in the meantime? Does it matter if we solve this question differently than the way you did it? It does not matter. Did you get B as your answer? Yes. Uh, then it really shouldn't. But um, how did you do it? Let me pull it back up. Sorry. Is this a Ruhi? How, how'd you do it? Did you I, put, uh, go ahead. I set f of x equal to zero and I just solved it that way. That's, that's, also, that's also a good way to do it because you know that this line is the line x, is the line y equals zero. So that's why you can set, yeah, so that absolutely works. You know that both f of x and g of x on this line equals zero. So that definitely works as well. Yeah, so you can, you can just say that 8x squared is zero, and then this will give you the same plus and minus one half. Good job. Yeah, that absolutely works. Yeah, that wasn't me. That was a different person. Like, I'm a Ruhi. Okay, sorry, Ruhi. Your voices to me sound really similar. <laughs> that's not the first time I made that mistake. Sorry, my apologies. On the quiz, it says um, to write a message to Christian, but then it says if you've worked with John. <laughs> okay, okay. You can see.